those of you who have already taken your seats. And now, I'm going to introduce the following speaker. His name is Anton Novoa. And I'm sad for, because uh, some of the people haven't been able to come back today because they didn't hear uh, yes, uh, the, the panel that preceded us, and they're not going to be able to hear our panel. And our panel is going to be the absolutely best of them all. But I'm going to introduce Anton. He is a man who has defended human rights and independent living. And he has been an entrepreneur in NGOs NGOs that are working in the fields of diversity and inclusion. He's a member of the forum. And he also participated in the first Congress in Tenerife. He represents Spain in the ENIL. And he was a board member at ENIL. And he um, promoted the Galician system for personal assistance. And he's also been a well, founding member of uh, VID in Galicia. He also founded Solcom. And he's been with the Institute for Diversity and Inclusion. And he's also collaborated in the creation of the FEVI. And he also was instrumental in organizing these groups in the south of Spain. Apart from all of these activities, he's written many published articles. These articles have been about independent living. And he's a fantastic artist and art producer. <laughs> and apart from everything I have already talked about, he participated in the Imserso uh, sit-in at the European level at the Euro European community level. Let's give the floor to Anton then. Hello, everyone. I'd like to thank the organizers of this Congress for having invited me to participate in this second European Congress on Independent Living. It's hard for me to participate with this conference call. I can sort of get a feeling for what it's like in that room, and I, I get a warm feeling. But you didn't say that I did my military service in Ferrol.
I'm going to be talking about a law that covers independent living. And I think here we have a little um, space and time lapses, and let me explain what I'm talking about. This is how I perceive things. Yesterday, a Congress was held, or perhaps it was the day before yesterday, a Congress was held in Andalusia, the south of Spain, a Congress on personal assistance. And what I'm going to say here should have been said in that Congress that would held in the south of Spain a, a yesterday and the day before yesterday. The president of the CERMI, the representative of Spanish people with disability, were there. And there were lots of relevant people in the NGO movement. And I think that would have been the ideal forum to talk about a law that covers independent living and that's being drafted now. Because this law is going to include a formula for uh, personal assistance that um, includes the criteria of the UN's Convention on the Rights of People with Disability. And it includes recommendations um, uh, from the UN's committee that has informed this uh, convention, and that was all of these comments were published in 2017. Well, today, here I am. Here you all are listening to me rather than listening to the president of the re representatives of people with disability in Spain or listening to any of the other uh, presidents of the federations and confederations of groups uh, representing people with uh, functional diversity who could uh, very well have been here in my place to talk about this law. But here I am. I'm a, no, a nobody, just somebody who's just saying one more time that we really need to have a law that serves as an instrument to bring about independent living and to force compliance with the UN's convention and to provide these services to a very large minority, to provide these a, a tool um, that will allow people to change their lives, change the way they live, and um, change their mentality. So I was thinking when I prepared my presentation, I thought, I have uh, participated in sit-ins in the IMSERSO. Oh, the IMSERSO is the department of the minister, which is in charge of pol public policies that affects functional diversity, among other things. And I've also participated in sit-ins in the European Commission. And in these sit-ins, what, what we were trying to achieve was to get a law passed in Spain to cover these issues. But before I participated in these sit-ins, we've written lots of essays and put together lots of documents to try to convince people to simply disseminate information and explain to people what personal uh, um, assistance is and um, uh, how people who are considered to be dependent actually want to live out our citizenship. And we have also participated and in different commissions in the Congress um, in, uh, of Spain, uh, we contributed to the Toledo Pact 
and we have insisted that people uh, who need uh, personal assistance, assistance services should have this right included in the law uh, on dependence. And what has all this led to? Well, so basically we were able to plant a seed in the law um, for dependence. But that was all we were able to do. And we have to, it has a, a seed that hasn't been fertilized. It doesn't have the nutrients that it needs to grow. In, in other words, it's a car without gas in its tank. Here we've talked about uh, economic resources necessary to be able to acquire these services. And if we haven't got these economic resources, then we can't acquire the services. We can very well say that there are, we don't have enough resources for this, but it's not true. But I'm not sure everybody is aware of the, the fact. On various occasions, Spain has tried to pass laws about disability. And there are three that were real important. The one that was passed in 1982, which was the law for handicapped people that established uh, a, uh, the system that was ultimately built for people with disability. In 2003, we had the law against discrimination against people with functional diversity. This was very much in along the lines of the social model, uh, the independent life models. In 2007, the law um, of dependent people was passed. So, one, uh, so once again, it addressed the whole issue of dependent in Spain to be able to launch a whole series of services to help increase people's um, personal autonomy or to simply provide basic needs for people with functional diversity. And the upshot of this law then has been and, well, the upshot in terms of personal assistance is that since 0.5 percent of the resources that are covered by the law are devoted to um, a, a personal assistance, and all the rest, 99.9 percent, go to providing basic um, care. So when we looked at that budget and when that law was being drafted, we realized that that law uh, had three things that um, weren't going to work for us. In other words, this law, of course, was based on good intention, but then we had those three um, negative points, the economic um, trap, uh, the paradigm track, uh, were two of them. So let's talk about the paradigm trap. This law, as I say, had those three traps in it that were built right in. Because of the paradigm trap, we're talking about a, a model for providing, providing assistance, which was based on the medical rehabilitation model. And it included a formula and it didn't have anything to do with private services. And so, in other words, it was mixing apples and oranges. And the law, in its spirit, was trying to provide um, um, things that would be more, uh, that would correspond more closely to the social model while it was being built on the medical rehabilitation model. Now, let's talk about the economic trap. We understood at the time that that pretty soon we, we were going, once the law had actually been put into force and we were trying to garner the necessary economic resources to make it viable and attract all of those players who were going to be providing services in the sector, once they realized what a great business this was, then then we would build the whole business around uh, dependence. Well, indeed, this is what has happened. This is exactly what's happened. And as a matter of fact, over time, since the law was passed in 2007, 
Well, even in 1982, way back when that first law, the law for social integration was passed, then the NGO movement and all of these associations went out and started to demand things. And when that first 1982 law was uh, launched, then people started to demand things. And so, in other words, their whole, all of the thrust was to see what you could get. So once this third law, the law for dependent people, was put into force, then people continued along in that business spirit. So a whole industry, in fact, has grown around um, disability and functional diversity. And all those organizations well, uh, all of those organizations that provide services to users um, have established um, structures that are basically directed towards providing care. Vale. Eh, bien, vale, disculpas. Eh, perdón. Entonces, eh, quiero decir con esto que dado so que said, estos desarrollos a preamble, que, que se han visto all of these eh, things that have created um, interest in, in terms of the financing of services have created a problem. And so now we're drafting a new law so that we can define clearly the tool that will actually put down on paper how these resources need to be provided, how personal assistance resources need to be provided in Spain, and our public sphere is um, used to caregiving, and so the NGO movement as well is um, has become accustomed to this um, caregiving model. And so now we've started drafting a law and the objective of this law is to develop y a, el a, in, in, and make it possible, uh, uh, sí sí let's put it this way, to develop the human rights of people with functional dis uh, diversity and España to make it possible for them to exercise their human eh, rights. Que, eh, and that's what the spirit of the convention is all about. Vale, so eh, the law that's being drafted now con, digamos, con, con esta convención es trasladarla uh, then has the intention of actually putting into practice all of the things that are included in the United Nations Convention. What we've seen is that Article 19 of the UN Convention that speaks of people having the, uh, the right to an independent life through uh, using support systems, they've seen how important that is. And we've also seen that Article 19 of the Spanish Constitution that speaks about to uh, have the free choice of residence and circulation. We believe that those two articles complement each other perfectly. So what we've seen up until now, which has been the development of social policies, De los derechos sociales que uh, based la on the en social el rights which are in Article 49, which is where we find all the laws and notions related to functional diversity. So we think that we have to go beyond that. What are we talking about when we're talking about the freedom to choose your place of residence and freedom to choose where you, you, you circulate? We're talking about fundamental rights, as a matter of fact. So what we're trying to do is actually create a law that will make it possible Como, um, for people to have a tool unas so that we can move so that we can actually put into practice some of the innovations that we've been seeing. 
and that these things will be included in, in uh, policies. And we're talking about creating a public system which promotes um, independent life, and this is going to be done through the figure of a personal assistant. And here we explain that the personal assistant is a resource which is made available for people with functional diversity, and then there can be instances where people um, share resources or the, uh, share the services of a personal assistant. And we're also talking about developing a whole public system which supports independent living. And we're talking about all the levels of government the national, regional, and local levels of government need to support these initiatives. We need to have a, sing a single economic fund, which should be under the auspices of the, of the state, which will provide the financing for the individual resources that people will have access to. And this goes from close to the social services, and then each year, it will go to the state budget, and then there, there will be transfers from that budget to each autonomous community. So every month, the person that has the right to that provision managed, that is managed, managed for that independent living, and then, as I'm saying, this is a provision for that person for the self-management, for the personal assistant. And each month, that person receives a certain amount that has been agreed upon. And, of course, everything will de be determined by the number of hours that each individual person requires. So we have the recognition of a provision for self-management for to hire a personal assistant for independent living. We're speaking about the possibility to set up these uh, public system for independent living. This is one single fund for independent living and the figure of a personal assistant. Now, this has not been um, established. So these innovations show that this would be a, an organic law. What we propose is organic law because this is a law which entails the basic rights. And, as such, we are now trying to spread the news about this in order to um, have contacts with uh, parliamentarians from different political parties. In, in the Congress of Deputies to support this law and to, to be in the uh, parliamentary process. And so here, I think that it would be better for you to uh, ask any question or if you have any misgivings or Anything you'd like to know, whether we could have that kind of a session now. Okay, this has been very, very, <gasps> very, very interesting. So, so this, I think... I know that activists for um, precisely for independent living where we are having a, a draft of the law for a provision to uh, for the self-management of independent living where we have a state system which which um, sends the funds to the uh, in, uh, autonomous communities whereby there are mechanisms determined in order to Mm, render these services, and they have to refer to the training of the um, assistants. And so this would be, it's a list about what personal assistance is all about in Spain. This can be used, um, but we can also um, we can also specify things. Now, where does the money come from to fund this? Well, from the general state um, budget. How 
how do we go there? Well, there can be taxes. Or else, there can be a law that everyone would pay, and it would be a tax, uh, a value-added tax. Everyone consumes, everybody pays VAT, so this would be certainly interesting to look at. So as I say, I'm repeating, there would be a tax on the, the VAT, value-added tax. Some of my messages. Well, well, we have the um, associations, and we have the we have the CERMI, the State Committee of Disabled Persons Representatives, and they should um, and they should work together. And we see that we are going to have to look at our rights when we're alive. When we're dead, this all of this will be useless. So let's take this law as an example, and this they can help pilot this law, and I think this is the best thing that they can do for people who um, need uh, this independent living. And, and here we have a uh, we have the lowest stratum in personal autonomy here and these are the group of people with a, with a, precisely with the functional diversity and so we would have the industry for the rendering of uh, social uh, care if there if well you have to see that there be people because this is infamy, and it's, it is just showing that there are organizations which are no longer, they're just useful for um, in a mercantile aspect. Everyone should become involved. Our colleagues in Europe, our um, colleagues in Europe for independent living, I would say, that we're going to have to make a common front so that the European Social Fund have a specific area to promote um, citizenship of people who um, are people with a functional diversity. So let's be together and come together. So if the problem which tends to be that there is no funding, then there should be specific funding specifically for people who are still considered as people who are um, outcasts. So in my country, independent living, my activist friends, well, we can no longer, we have to keep on, keep on, and we're going to have to, there should be accountability here. And because we want everything to become a reality as soon as possible.